Um, I'd like to now introduce our, um, our guest uh, farmer for the day, who's going to share their case study with us, um, Chad Burbridge. Um, Chad is a third generation farmer based 30 k's out of Murray Bridge in the Murray Mallee. He runs 3,800 merinos and crops 2,400 hectares. Um, and Chad is also a current producer on the advisory panel for Sheep Connect um, SA. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Chad. Um, my name's Chad Burbage, obviously. Um, 3,800 ewes generally. Um, minimum of 5,000 sheep on the farm, 6,000 acres of crop. I uh, love my wool and merinos, so that's probably where my passion is. Um, I got asked to talk about the one percenters that I do on the farm. Um, when I started thinking about that, I thought, well, I don't think I do any one percenters that most people don't, but um, so I struggled a bit with that. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll go to um, what people, when people ask me, why do I do that? So then I started going back the last 10 years or so and thinking, well, people have said to me, why do you do that? So I've gone through a list of things that people have asked me. Um, so probably one of the earliest things I did was went through um, trace element side of things on the farm, blood tests, soil tests, liver tests, all those sorts of things. Um, basically the first one I did was formulate a dry feed mix. So on our stubbles, just we had to level out that nutrition balance, utilise the feed better. And then I created a green feed one as well for my farm. Uh, the main feed, reason I had to do it was my salts at sort of high 15,000 parts um, in my water, so nothing eats a salt block or anything like that. Um, and then I went on to really pushing the lambing side, so there's one specialised for lambing like Deb was talking before. Um, yes, yeah, so, and I love that product for the lambing phase. Um, yeah, I get very low ewe mortality, like less than 1% um, through all that phase. Um, the biggest notice with the dry feed mix was the tensile strength. I yeah, probably gained five newtons easily when I started using it. Um, again, the smooth muscle function with the lambing part. And yeah, this, the lamb seemed to grow very, very well for the first few months. Um, EID is another one I used fairly early, a while ago. Um, and probably the main reason I wanted it was to know what was born a twin and what was born a maid, uh, or single, and especially what was from a maiden ewe. That way, come classing time, I could know if it was a twin out of a maiden ewe, she's never going to be as good as a single out of an old ewe. And that's normally where all the best genetics are from the maiden ewes. Uh, I also split lambing, and so I have two lambs, roughly 1,700 and 2,000 sort of thing. That way I can use higher end rams twice each year, spreads the risk, obviously it's written up there. Um, it's a lot harder to manage, but I enjoy it for, um, with the other benefits that come with it. Um, all my ewes are in skin type groups, not in age groups, and so that way I can always match a ram to the group of ewes. So I'm always correctively mating towards the animal that I want. Um, most people think it's very hard, but I've got no more mobs than everyone else, so I just run them in skin types, not age groups. Uh, it helps a lot with um, getting less of those obvious culls come classing time, so there's a much more even line of young ewes all the time coming through. Uh, also been six months shearing for a long time, and normally try and plan six to eight weeks before lambing, just use it for the ewe side of the stuff. Um, by doing that, also any break that does happen from ill health is right near the tip as well. So generally get pretty good premiums for high Newton wools. Um, I used to get discounted reasonably well for overlengths because I'm only running 17, 18 micron stuff and yeah, I was pushing out over 120 mils each year. So um, the discount for that was far higher than going slightly under length. Um, uh, what's your average uh, six month shearing length now? It uh, depends on the time of the year, um, but the lowest bars of wool would be 58 mil sort of thing, up to mid 70s. And is it your, do you shear in Feb, February? Or um, so I shear late January and then 
late March, so yep. I'm just hearing yesterday and tomorrow. Oh, yeah. um, and so is that the time of the year when it's shorter? Um, normally the one with the lamb on it is the, the shortest, generally. Um, I also like to try and keep my best ewes longer, so I don't care if they're a six-year-old you, I'd rather have them, my best genetics there, and get another lamb out of them. Um, so that means that I can go a bit harder on my young ewes to start with. Um, I wean on a date, not on anything else. Um, so yeah, pretty much I mark my lambs in the first week of after the last one's born, and then I like to leave six weeks for recovery, and then they're weaned, as simple as that, no questions. Um, yeah, it helps with your recovery and I, I can manage my pastures a bit better as to yeah, allocating the lambs to the best feed possible. Um, I've started mating new lambs in the last few years. Um, yeah, the, so I get six pregnancies out of some of my best ewes by doing that. Um, but yeah, new lambs is a lot harder and a lot more complicated, in, especially in this earlier lambing sort of area. Um, at the moment, lamb survival is a big one for me. That's where I've had a lot of focus the last few years. Um, everything scanned, multiple triplets. Um, try and reduce the twin mobs as small as possible. Um, yeah, I, I take all my singles out to sort of 400 in a mob. And don't, I get sort of 90, I think I've averaged 97% survival in the singles for the last few years and about 0.3 for U deaths in the singles as well. Um, yeah, match feed to the fetuses. Um, with the twins, I've been trying to put out multiple feed stations um, just to try and spread them out um, when they're lambing. Um, just to, rather than all going back to the same spot all the time, and um, especially with the I use teasers as well, so some of them lambs can get a bit tight or a big flush at the same sort of time. Um, yeah, I don't accept tries anymore. I pretty much get one chance in Marina and then they'll get put to a terminal and then if they don't can see then they're out no matter what their age. Um, yeah, just measure lamb and new survival in the last few years. Um, I'm still nowhere near happy with my twins survival. And yeah, only talking high 60s, 70% sort of stuff for the twins, but yeah, really high 90s for singles, so still got plenty of work to do on that. The other issue I sort of see with profitability um, is sustainability. You know, we're not going to be able to use chemicals, not going to be able to mules, and we'll lose market access. So it's a big thought pattern a few years ago of mine. So then, yeah, I love playing with genetics and I'm all non-mules for a while now and yeah, I hate wrinkles full stop. Um, so yeah, more recently started to score my better end stuff for breech cover, breech wrinkle. You know, I haven't used a fly preventative for 15 years or more. Um, if I get two or three body strike out of 5,000 sheep a year, I would be at the higher end. Um, I don't select for micron or anything anymore, I used to, now it's just it's got to be soft and white and the bolder the better. Just want low curvature, bold walls and all that sustainability stuff comes from the skin so just it's a high priority of mine is the skin like you saw from the matings groups earlier. Other things that I do that's probably not for everyone or not just for commercial stuff is I've been AIing for a long time, um, been genomics, testing some of my better end just to see where they sit in recent times, I've just formed a uh, merino stud because um, I've been breeding my own rams for a long time. Um, I've done some new lamb trial work with Adelaide Uni at the moment and did some trial work with lamb survival last year and some more again this year with Adelaide Uni. And I'm on sheep genetics for the last few years. Um, and probably what I want you guys from what I do is, if you're only getting 110%, it's just not good enough. Um, we've got too many deaths. Like two years ago, I averaged 124% um, lambing. 
which was one of the highest in the area, but I still left two full semi loads of lamb sitting out in the paddock that I lost. So the, we're happy with 120 odd percent, but yeah, when you think about what you've lost, it's pretty huge. Um, and I, I don't try and scan, um, get more use into lamb because I'm already scanning high 140s, low 150s, including maidens. So yeah, that's not a push of mine anymore. I've, my push now is keeping them alive. Um, and you have to understand ASBVs. If it's the only thing you learn from today, is just go home and learn ASBVs for sheep and how they fit into the operation. And match your U-type to your area. That's probably a big thing that a few years ago was yeah, people influencing me were saying you should have this type of sheep or you should do this or you should do that. But a lot of the time it is not right for either your, my management or for my environment. So it's just um, learning what suited what I wanted and what I needed. Um, yeah, non mules and just start breeding towards it, whatever you do. Because yeah, Cole's already talking that yeah, they won't buy meat from mules sheep. So it's gonna happen full stop.